One of my favourite theories on consciousness and its transcension after death is by Dr. Stuart Hameroff and Sir Roger Penrose, called the Quantum Consciousness and the Orchestrated Objective Reduction, or ORC OR. Penrose took a mathematical approach using Godel's theorem at its core. What Penrose deduced was that for the brain to compute the way it does, it cannot do so linearly by using progressional algorithms. Therefore, a reasonable conclusion was that there must be an additional information processing system. Penrose called this non-computable processing. He mathematically showed that for information to be processed in a non-linear fashion, the brain must compute quantum mechanically. There was something very interesting with Penrose's calculations. The fundamental level of space-time geometry, from which, mathematically, Penrose calculated this is the point where consciousness is derived. Penrose decided to publish his remarkable work of astounding mathematical intellect. However, he lacked evidence that organic material in the brain was capable of conducting these orchestrated objective reductions. Therefore, his work remained a hypothesis. Then came along Dr. Stuart Hamroth, who changed this hypothesis into an established scientific theory. Hamroth read Penrose's paper and using his own expertise in neuroscience and consciousness studies, deduced that the brain is capable of performing such tasks within structural components called the microtubules. These are very small polymer-like cylindrical constructions made up of tubulin protein dimer subunits. They form the structure of neurons and are fundamental for the transmission across the synapse. Their sizes are incredibly small, approximately 2 nanometers. The key component is that these microtubules contain high densities of pi orbiting electrons. Hameroff showed that the microtubules were close enough to each other due to them being positioned in such high clusters to allow the pi orbiting electrons to become quantumly entangled. A brain at the microtubule level is entangled quantum mechanically. This means information at this point in the brain can be processed and transferred to this point instantly with no traceable path. Now, let's apply it to consciousness after death. What happens to us? Penrose and Hameroff have showed that the brain is a quantum information processor at a fundamental level and the information within is entangled. However, a key component of quantum entanglement is that every point in space-time is connected. A severe disruption to the normal functioning of the brain, such as death, would lead the brain to no longer being entangled to itself. It will lose its quantum state. However, information can never be lost or destroyed. It is only transformed. The information that made us, us, would simply dissipate and entangle itself with the rest of the universe from which it came. As Penrose mathematically showed, consciousness is embedded into space-time itself. And one day we shall return to the infinite realm of universal consciousness.